Hey guys, this is Eric from eBiking Now, and I'm just in the eBiking Now studio. So uh, if you hear a bit of background noise, just ignore that. Um, so today I've got two kits with me from Aklo, and I've got my giant XTC. So I'm gonna install these kits onto the front wheel. They're street legal, so yeah, we're doing a little unboxing and installation and see how that goes. Also, the reason why I got two is because uh, they've sent me two types of batteries. One's a rear rack mounted um, battery, whereas the other's a bottle one. So obviously I don't have a rear rack, so I can't mount it on that. So I'm just gonna do the bottle. So let's get into it. Oh, strong cut. Hey, so this is the, this is the rear rack. Oh, it actually gives you a rear rack. So I could actually put that on my bike. I can't be bothered though. So what we got, charger, um, I'm not sure what that is. Cables, uh, we got, what is that, four to one, that's four to one. Um, some grips, I think that's a half grip throttle. Uh, more cables, oh that's a controller, wiring harnesses, pass sensor, brake sensors, uh, what's this, oh the LCD meter, or LE 880 meter, okay, obviously you got the wheel, I didn't break anything this time. And that's pretty much it. So just a quick recap of what's in the box. We have the bike wheel with the motor, the battery, brake sensors, pass sensor, charger, half grips and throttle, 4 to 1 cable, keys and an 880 meter. So this is the other box. Um, it's pretty much identical. The only difference is this one over here. As uh, the bottle style battery so but everything else is pretty much exactly the same let's start with the installation with taking off the front wheel since this is a front wheel kit I had a quick release skewer so it made things easy for me so I just released that and took off the wheel as you can see here this is the wheel that came off my bike and here's the wheel with the motor from the kit the tire tube and disc rotor will need to come off to be transferred onto this new wheel to take the tire and tubes off just flatten it first and then use the tire leaves to pop it off I got a lot better at this from my experience with the last kit I did and plus these tires were a lot easier. Lucky me. Now we must take the disc rotor off and this will be transferred onto the new wheel as I said before. Using the appropriate size allen key, remove the screws and take the brake disc off. There was a spacer that I removed from the kit wheel. If you need a spacer, keep it. If not, just remove it like I did here. Once that's completed, the disc can go onto the new wheel. Just make sure that it's on the right way and also use the screws that were on the motor as they perfectly fit it. The tie and the tube is the next thing that you'll have to transfer over to the new wheel. Before you do that however, make sure that the rim tape is on the wheels and also the holes line up for the valves to fit through. So stick the valve through first and pry the tie onto the rim like so. You may need to use tie levers for this. Here you have the motor wheel all set up, so the only thing left for it is to fit onto the forks. Make sure that the washer with the extruded side fits into the gap of your dropouts, otherwise you'll have some issues with the fitment of the wheel and the brakes as I did last time. So just remember this. Just to show you guys once more, here's how it's meant to look like. Also don't forget to tighten the bolt and add the cap. Right, so I'm gonna install this cradle now, and also just one thing I like to mention is this has a controller already in here, whereas the rear rack mounted one doesn't, so it has a separate controller. Um, that's why I like these one better, to be honest. Um, so let's see how this fits. Oh, come right here. So only 
one of the holes really lines up. Can't really get both of them. So I'll just have to do one. See if the battery fits in here. Sweet! This is the pedal assistance system. It detects when you're pedaling and tells the motor to supply power when you are. So it just splits into halfway and install it onto the bike's crank spindle like so. The metal ring is then fitted around the plastic disc to lock it. This should move with the cranks by the way. Also guys, just make sure that it's the correct way as well. The plastic disc will say on which side that it needs to face the sensor. Onto the sensor now, you need to find where to place it. Generally the C-tube is the best as you can see here and you can adjust the position of the disc for the perfect fitment. Just use the zip tie supplied to fit the sensor. Hopefully these zip ties are long enough and we don't have to do the human centipede type thing again. So the sensor has two holes for the zip ties to thread through. Feed the first cable tie to loosely attach it to the seat tube. Once you're certain with its placement, peel off the film and place the sensor onto the bike frame. So now thread the second zip tie and fasten it. Oh, and there's just one more thing, which is the screw here. This needs to be tightened so that the sensor does not move. Okay, cable connecting time. So this will begin with the yellow cable from the pass sensor which connects to the other yellow port from the battery's controller. There are two more cables left which are the motor and the 4 to 1 cable. The motor cable will require an extension lead which you can grab from the kit. Connect the lead from the motor to the controller where the cable will need to be zip tied to the down tube. So this is the 880 meter which needs to go into the handlebars and this here is the 4 to 1 cable which connects to the controller from the battery. You can plug it in and bring it up to the handlebars to prep it for the meter. Also with all these cable guys just remember to see if there's a specific position for the connections. This is usually indicated by arrows which need to line up. To install the meter I remove the screws with a Phillips screwdriver and snap it on like so. Once done, all you have to do is screw it into place, which leaves the cables of the meter the only thing left. So these are the green highlighter ports which have arrows on them to identify the rotation of the connection. Don't just slam these together because there are patterns and you'll break them if you do so. The red cables are for the brake sensors and the yellow is for the throttle, which is the half grip throttle. I didn't bother fitting this as I don't really like half grip throttles and as for the brake sensors I didn't want to go through the trouble fitting them, they are a little bit tedious to install. So we'll test it out. Turn it on. Yep. Good. Kind of scared. Okay, here we go. Oh no. Oops. I think I need a throttle to actually try this out. Okay. Yes! Woo! Look at that! Awesome! Oh, no, 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 no. So that pretty much wraps up the video. Just don't forget to tidy up those cables using the zip ties provided. Hope this video was of great help. And thanks for watching, guys. And for the full review, jump on our website, ebikingnow.com. And also for the video review for the actual kit itself, follow the link in the description box below. And don't forget to ride on, ebikers.